And welcome back to Rebuild Series, episode 176. And so we are back here at the airbase. Um, I brought Katie did back, and I brought the Mac Pinnacle and the low loader, the low loader 53 wide load back. And so what we're going to do is I'm actually going to trailer up the front end loader. We'll dump that off, um, and I will also. Uh, get the mining truck and bring that up. So I thought people might be interested in seeing me actually trailer these up. So let's go ahead and do that, and it shouldn't take that long. All right, so we have the uh, LL53 wide load here. Let's go ahead and hook up with the light cord. Um, I have a fire extinguisher on me. I'm just going to throw it in the corner here. Um, you know, might need, might be able to use that later. We have one in the Mac. All right, so that's going to get plugged in. Let's go ahead and pull forward. And we'll set this up outside so that I can spawn some things. That's just releasing the brake. Uh, IRL, you can release the brakes with the vehicle off. You just All you're doing is opening an air valve. So you have the same kind of system here. All right, so we're going to pull out enough that I can spawn that loader. And I uh, should be able to get that loader right in here. One last thing I kind of want to edit on the loader is the steering speed. If you remember last time when I was going up the mountain with it, it was a little bit um, difficult to steer that um, just because the steering speed was a little bit slow. So, again, these are the things that you need to um, think about. All right, so let's go and uh, I need to lower the foot. I should have done that before. This is how I can get screwed up here is if I don't put the foot down, it can allow that gooseneck to flip too far left or right. Um, it should be light enough that my player character can push it, but uh, lowering that foot is how you secure it. All right, let's go ahead and pull forward here. So just pull straight ahead. Okay, so let's go ahead and set the brakes. All right, next thing I want to do is, again, with a T-Tis trailer, uh, just like a real-life air brake trailer, the brakes start in the on position if you have no air supplied to them. So if it's disconnected from the tractor, the air is on. And so the benefit with that is that you're able to load the trailer without pushing it because the brakes are on. So let's grab our loader. Let's do a quick test here. Um, presently, let me check the hinge. The hinge speed, I think we can just do it here. So currently it's at a 1. Let's go to a 2. And we'll see how that performs. Uh, my issue with it was it wasn't resetting fast enough. So AD, steering reset, 100% uh, sensitivity. That's because it's on a um, up-down counter, I believe. So I just sped up the hinge. Let's see how I like that. Again, this stuff needs paint. Um, as you can see, there's some wonky paint here and there. Um, that's not something I'm too concerned about right now. And if you remember last time, uh, I had some collision issues with the bucket, so that was fixed in the last episode. So much more responsive. You see how I can turn back and forward much faster now? So this is much more responsive. I can um, steer a little bit quicker. So I want to load a bucket towards the rear. That way I can put the bucket over the rear axle. There we go. All right, and so I'm just going to kind of take my time and get some space here. And I'll go in third person so everybody can see. It's a little windy here. As you can see, we have the streamers in the air. All right. And this is why we need the wide load. Uh, the I-beam trailer will also work with this. Um, I've yet to use the I-beam trailer yet, so let's back up here. Nice thing with this is this is diesel electric. Um, very rarely do I not have a button for reverse, um, but this does. Loaders especially your you're constantly going forward and reverse um, as you're scooping, so uh, this makes a lot of sense to have this just as forward reverse. And so this one is wanting to slip and slide all over town here. So let's get this up there. Okay, let's go there. Let's put the brakes on. This one could be a little iffy on this. Yeah, as you see, this kind of wants to go through. The collisions um, aren't really working for me, so let's go ahead and do this. Again, I like to I like to do all the trial and error. I like you guys to see me having issues too. Um, you know, I think it gives you a more real, realistic gameplay. All right, so let's uh, oh, did I close that? Yeah. Okay, good. So let's go ahead and I will grab. 
I did not. Let's go ahead and load up Pinnacle. And let's try the I-beam trailer. So this is one of the reasons I built the I-beam trailer is, you know, again, we have to deal with the game as it is, and so there are some issues with the collisions with the wheel that aren't necessarily realistic, and so instead of complaining about them, I'm just going to work with the way we have it. And so you will see these I-beam trailers where, especially for oversized vehicles um, that they'll just attach the frame, you'll often see... Um, you know, you'll often see especially huge open pit mining trucks. Um, they're, they'll take the wheels off and just tow up the frames, and then they'll assemble the wheels. It'd be cool if we could do something like that, but we can't. So, so we have the I-beam trailer. Let me just uh, finish buttoning this up here. So I just want to check um, composite signals. Make sure the composite signals are going through. And they are. All right, good. And so what I want to do here is there's one last thing I need to do here, and I'm trying to see exactly where I want to put it. So on this build here, I need a toggle. So uh, what's that? That is important. Let's put it in the back here. So what is this? This is wings. Um, let me double check that. That's extensions. This doesn't have any extensions, so that can go. Um, I shouldn't have done that. Let's go ahead and check the logic. The logic is going right here to extensions panel. So let's go ahead and take that out. And then let's take this out. Uh, this is should be uh, securing ropes. We don't have securing ropes any, or winches anymore. So let's go ahead and see what that's going to. That's going to winches. So winches can come out, as can the panel. All right, and so what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to take some block and I'll fill this back in. So I think I did. Let's see if I can just go like that. All right, good. And so let's go ahead and let's put the locking there. That way, if uh, that way we don't have any issues. All right, and I should probably put a reflective strip on the inside. I'm not too concerned about it right now, so I'm not going to do it right now. But let's take a toggle button. All right, toggle one-sided. Let's stick it right here. And then what I want to do is this is kind of a pain, but um, I'm going to take this toggle. And as you can see, I have all these. Um, they have brakes on them, and then they have release connector. So what I want is... Hmm. Let's do a blank panel. All right. All right, so let's go ahead like this. So what I want to do is I want to add button. Okay. And then I want to add an output. That's going to be a uh, release, and so this will just release it from the track. And then this here will be an output, and this will be break. Okay. And so if the button is on, I want the break. So if the button's on, I want the brakes on for those grippers. If the button is not on, I want release. Pretty simple. And so we'll go here. And this one's going to be kind of a pain. As you can see, we have a lot of them here. So we have release. And so I could do every other one, but I'm just going to do every one of them. You know, I could put grippers on the actual vehicle, but I kind of prefer the way these look and the way this will function this way. You know, I could probably just do one side, but that's just laziness. So I'm just going to quickly go through and we'll do them all here. All right. Uh, that release, release. Hopefully I'm doing the right one. Release, yep. If I did the other one, I was not going to move them all again. What I would do is just change it inside the microcontroller. So for those who may still not know, if you hold control, you can do multiple connections. 
Because you can imagine how long this would take if you didn't do that. And so we're going to have to do all the top ones too. It's kind of the tedium that happens sometimes when you do something like this. But it is what it is. Home free on that one. So let's do the next one here. All right. And we'll hear this noise in our sleep tonight probably. But it'll pay off with this functioning the way that I want it to. So as much as I like, um, you know, the excavator fits fine on that low loader, wide load trailer. Um, you know, but there are some issues with, there are certainly issues with um, functionality of, of the wide load trailer. It uh, can just misbehave a little bit more than I'd like. All right, we're almost done here with this, and this will give me the ability to um, lock whatever vehicle we put on here onto the I-beams of the trailer. The nice thing is now that all this is connected, I can easily just move them and they'll stay connected. All right, so let's go ahead and grab this. We'll cut it, and we'll pl paste it in there. All right, last thing to do is electricity here. So this will go these. I don't need winches anymore. Um, I'm not going to bother um, deleting them at the moment. So this can just go like that. And I need to connect my electricity. Let's we'll grab this one here because those will go at some point. And hook it to there. And now we have electricity. So let's go ahead and save this as my I-beam trailer. All right, let's spawn this in. All right, and let's go ahead and hook it up to the Mac Pinnacle. So we want to raise the gooseneck. All right, and so we'll grab this I-beam trailer. We'll put the, um, actually, I'll leave it in there, and we'll load the, actually, I'll bring it outside. We'll load the loader in on top of this, and we'll see how it works. So this is actually the first time I've actually loaded something on the I-beam trailer. And so this will hopefully work, and we can get, um, I hit the wrong button. And we can load the um, trailer on and have it secured. And we won't have that uh, annoying issue with the wheels kind of glitching for us. So, come on. Reverse. There we go. Okay. Let's go ahead and jump out and put the brakes on. But that's not a big deal. So we'll lower this trailer down. As you can see, we can raise way up to get the vehicle more off the ground if need be. All right, we need to hook up the cable. All right, so let's jump in. Let's go ahead and go forward. Uh, I need to shut the brakes off on the trailer. All right, so we have our I-beam trailer. As you can see, it is very long. And the reason the trailer is very long is for the mining dump truck. Mining dump truck is a very large vehicle, and so need that to be um, long enough to carry something that large and so built this so that it would easily fit that and who knows what kind of other vehicles we'll have you know if I build the scraper that's gonna probably need something that large all right let's go ahead and pull forward all right and we're in way high gear here okay all right, let's go ahead and try to load the loader on here now. So as you can see, we have the connectors there. And so I'm going to try to line it up and get this on there. And hopefully I can hook this up. Um, yep. So that button should default off. And so um, all those grippers should be on release. And so that should uh, set us up. And so we'll just do some third-person uh, maneuvering of this here. And so go ahead and raise the bucket up. 
You know, it's a little bit of a pain that the mine is so far away just for where I have to spawn, but I don't mind transpawn. Transpawn's fun for me. That's part of the gameplay. I can see how some people might get a little bit annoyed with the distances if you have to bring something back to the bench. But again, again, you know, using creative menu, you save some time without having to drive it back, or if it's glitching out, you can just go ahead and send it back. Um, so we're going to kind of bridge with the I-beam. As you can see, we're bridging and we're lined up, so we're right on top of where we want to be. And I'm just going to go about, uh, we'll go about 50% right there is good. Um, what are we hitting? Why are we dancing here? We're dancing a little bit. All right, so I probably went too far. Let's go ahead and not go so far. And it's still very slow for me to respond on the hinge, so I'll, at some point I'll figure that out and fix it. But uh, it's certainly not something that's a huge deal that I have to worry about. All right, so let's try to steer this on. Can turn into a process here a little bit, but not bad. Okay, let's back it up. Let's try this again. I'm just going to get it started, and um, come on, let's go forward here. Did I hit brakes? I hit the brakes. Okay. I put the parking brake on to stop it, and I forgot that I did that. All right, so let's go ahead and line this up, and let's not go too far this time. You know, it was kind of riding up the rails, and it was taking the wheels off, and that was causing me a little bit of issue. So let's go ahead and put it there is good. Let's go ahead and jump out. And we will... Um, okay, that's toggled. You kind of see the trailer move, so that uh, grabbed. So this is gripped. And again, this trailer is designed for the... Um, for the mining dump truck, so it's why it's so long, so we don't need all of the length of it. And so if we get a cool mission pop-up, we might uh, go do that. You know, I'm kind of enjoying varying the gameplay. Um, you know, kind of getting back and forth from mining. Uh, you know, it's going to be a little bit less, less logistics once we get the... Um, once we get the equipment up there, you know, one of the things that's kind of taken some time here is to actually move our equipment up. And once our equipment is moved up, we'll be all set. Let's grab this here. So I just kind of need to nudge this in place, get this to grab. So I'm going to pull forward. There we go. We're grabbed. Okay, good. So let's go ahead and we're going to um, lower the gooseneck, which raises the trailer up. And so again, this is the first time I'm actually using this. So as you can see, it works really well. So let's take a quick pick here. I like having the pictures. And so that's our I-Beam 50. Uh, this is actually the I-Beam. I didn't change the name. It's changed in the save file, but it's actually like 70-something feet long. So it would no longer be a, a 53. It would be something like a 70. All right, so we're all set here. As you can see, that's going to be good for um, trailing. As the wheels hang off. It locks on there. Very stable. So let's go ahead and get out of here. So let's go start in second gear. You know, probably with this much weight, we'd start in first gear, but... Okay, this is interesting. I'm not turning. Oh, you know why? The foot's down. Okay. I didn't uh, follow my procedure and raise the foot. So I need to raise the foot. As you can see, the foot was blocking it from turning. That was doing exactly what the foot's job is. foot's job is to keep that gooseneck from turning so that it um, doesn't flip-flop around when we're trying to... Uh, back up. So let's go ahead and go in third person. The nice thing, so you saw last time me drive that... I should really put the bucket down. Sorry. Sorry. Me not paying attention. Me not paying attention. So the other thing I might add is a winch and the center to drag stuff forward once it's on the rails. I think that would be a good idea. Um, so put that on the old to-do list. So let's go ahead and put this bucket down. And we'll just rest it gently on the beam. All right, and that's mostly just for RP. That's how you'd have it. You wouldn't have the bucket sticking up. So let's go ahead and get out of here. All right, so we're in five. Let's go ahead and go third so you guys can see it a little bit better. So um, what I started to talk about before I um, screwed around with the bucket was, uh, if you remember last time we were going out in the loader, we'd probably do maybe 20 miles an hour. 
Um, I would say 30 at the very most. Um, the benefit of using a tractor trailer to move our vehicles is speed. Uh, this could, pr I have to check the top speed with this amount of weight, but I'm going to say we're probably going to be able to do, I would say, 60. And so we'll be able to do 60 miles an hour. Now, uh, one of the things with the new Industrial Frontier is these roads are incredibly wide. These are like uh, four-lane highway wide. And so that's good for, you know, not everybody's a professional driver and able to stay within a narrow lane. Um, you, know, you don't know the scale of the vehicles, so that's kind of nice to be able to have a nice wide highway. Uh, one of the things about having a wide uh, highway like this, though, is your perception of speed is going to be without lines, especially without dashed lines. Your perception of speed, things seem like they're going slower than they really are. So once we get moving here, you know, I'll show you the speed, and we can do a solid 60 miles an hour out to the mine. So that really um, that makes it much uh, much more viable to do transpo in a realistic way and that's the one thing that excites me is that's always ninth gear always smokes for some reason um, it's it's the real gear ratio that it is in real life I don't know why it does that so we're in tenth here we're doing 60 70 miles an hour so as you can see we're doing 70 miles an hour on these nice wide flat highways that's another thing that's awesome about this new industrial frontiers with these really long flat wide desert highways um, like certain parts oh I should raise the trailer a little bit more. Um, you know, so one of the benefits of having these long, flat um, highways, um, kind of like they might have in Texas, Arizona, um, a lot of these desert areas in the U.S., some of the speed limits are 80 miles an hour, and the reason is because you might have a 10-mile long stretch of flat, wide highway with very few people on it, so you can go 80 miles an hour. And so, we're, you know, we're comfortably doing... Uh, 70 miles an hour here. I have to be careful that I'm not driving off the road. Comfortably doing 70 miles an hour. Like, this is probably a six-lane highway width right here. And so, I have to be careful of any of these bumps. What I All I have to do is raise the trailer, and I won't have issues with that. Um, I just did not raise it all the way. As you can see, we had a little scrape there. I think I have damage off um, just because I don't want to accidentally hit something that I wouldn't realistically hit. So, might want to raise that trailer up at some point. Um, I should have done it when I started. Next time I'll make sure the trailer is a little bit more than level. It's it's just raised. And so we can do 70 miles an hour here pulling these vehicles. And so you saw how long it took with the front end loader last episode. We're able to scream along here at 70 miles an hour. We really shrink the distance. We're, we're already coming up on the mining, um, the mining mountain here. So it's not, you know, the distances seem vast out here. Um, but they're not too bad. And one of the nice things I like about actually having some vast distances is it makes it so that it's not only viable but necessary to run things like trucks. And so that, in in my opinion, gives you more gameplay. It makes you want to use more of your toys. Is You know, in the old game, I didn't have much reason to use the Mac Pinnacle and one of my low loaders to go do coal because all I have to do... Um, I might go do that fire here. Uh, I don't... You know, I had no reason to use it because I was going all of maybe a mile. And so maybe half a mile. Ooh, whoa, whoa, slow down, slow down, slow down, slow down. Yeah. All right, let's get out and fix this properly here. So um, get in your seat, guy. Let's just do this. Uh, this is what I should have done from the beginning is raised it up. So if you know you're going to have some um, terrain issues, uh, raise the trailer up. All right, and so... Um, you know, it this actually necessitates you using things like transportation trucks, because without them, it really, um, you know, it it starts to take a, a while to get to drive this excavator all the way up the mountain. And the other thing you saw here is we we had issues where I was getting stuck trying to come up the mountain with the excavator. Um, I know, I'm kind of jinxing myself to say it now, but we shouldn't have any problem in the Mac Pinnacle getting up there. You know, we're in ninth gear, going 45 miles an hour, probably doing 50-something now. Uh, we're going to have no problem going up this hill. You know, you remember last time, we are kind of slipping and sliding with the excavator, which I still need to, um, you know, tune the grip on the tires there. But as you can see, no problem getting up this, this hill um, with our equipment. We're doing, you know, 50-something miles an hour, about 50 miles an hour up this mountain. 
no problem. So it necessitates you using some things like transportation trucks. And so I like that. Um, you know, and if you don't want to use transpo trucks, that's when you'd probably want to go do, oh, don't, don't you dare, don't you dare jackknife and roll. Okie dokie, save that. Barely. Um, oh, come on, you. It will settle down in a second here. I uh, That was hairy, so... Uh, you know, just hitting things in the bottom. Again, this is an excessively long trailer, and that's kind of on purpose. Again, um, you know, you normally wouldn't be bombing around at 70 with a trailer like this, but um, that's because the trailer's so long that it has a good chance of bottoming out. All right, so we're back up here. Let's go ahead and we'll set our brakes. Set our brakes. Plural, both of them. And we'll jump out. All right, so let's go ahead and we're going to um, raise the gooseneck, which lowers the trailer. It still confuses me even. Um, let's go ahead and we'll lower the foot while I'm here. Um, if that flips off a little bit because of trying to disconnect, I don't want it to kick this to the side. All right, and let's go ahead and let's pull forward. You know, realistically, you would stall out trying to start ninth gear, but um, it's not a big deal in games, so I don't really worry about it. All right, so this works. Uh, proof of concept on this trailer works well. Let's go ahead and toggle that off. So we should be unlocked from the rail. Our wheels are touching. We should be able to get off now. Okay. And let's go ahead and raise the bucket. Let's back it up. I think I brakes on as well. I do. Every once in a while, you'd see some black smoke there as I as I was transpoing. That was due to the. Um, due to the the wheels of the loader actually hitting the ground as well. And so they're hitting the ground and they were just smoking the, the tires of the loader. Okay, come on, come on. Turn, 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 turn. All right, so this thing, I still need to fix the steering on this. Um, you know, it's just, it's it's taking too long. So like right now, I'll tell you when I hit it, I'm pressing D, holding D, holding D, holding D. Still pressing it, and now it turns. So I need to fix that so that um, speeds up a little bit quicker. Um... You know, it's just, it's not as responsive as, as I would like. So that's just in the microcontroller again. All these things go on my to-do list. Grip and that are kind of on my list to do. So one thing I'm going to do here is, again, we'll, we'll do a little bit of testing before I go do that mission. Um, I don't want to spend a ton of time. Um, you know, so the kind of the plan here is excavators up here. The loader's back up here. Loader's usable. Excavator's definitely, excavator's great. Um, what I want to do, though, is... I want to keep, I want to keep working here and doing a little bit of testing. And then once I get all my vehicles up and I kind of get into the um, mining space, that's when I can start to actually kind of mine for money. We're we're in the testing phase here of mining, and so I don't need to, um, I don't need to start making money yet on this. I just kind of, I want to get tested. I want to have a have a good understanding of how mining is going to work. And so let's start mining out our chunks here. All right, so I'm dropping the rocks. So I don't need that funnel on the side. It's it's not, without a uh, conveyor or a hopper, it's just um, dropping them, which is fine. So I'm kind of, as you can see, I can even stack them. So we need to stop. And I need to try to grab them with the loader. And so I know this is going to be growing pains. I know this is going to be trying to learn. You know, I kind of had a complaint last time of the devs made the timer on these way too short. Um, again, I need, I still need to make the, oh, come on, Th this grip on this is really terrible on this loader. I need to fix it. Um, you know, it's just, it's very slippery. Um, I thought I XML edited the tires. I may have not have, so. And so I'm trying to go down and scoop these up here, so. There are my rocks. Let me jump out and screw with this for a second. I don't want to get crunched up on the loader here, but, um. So I'm able to grab the ore. So the ore is still there, even however long a time that was. Um, let's check that. Ore 2. All right, so what I'm going to try to do here is try to reposition. Let me try to leave this here and re and move the excavator. And I'm going to see if I can't grab the ore, um, have it slide downhill into the bucket. So I'm kind of coming up with a procedure of how is this going to practically work IRL. now. Of course, I would like to work like it would uh, real life. You would, you would mine it, and then you would, um, 
you know, scoop it up with the bucket. But, you know, until, if they don't change the timer, we're not going to be able to do that. If these aren't sliding into the bucket, we're not going to be able to do that. So, again, instead of complaining, I'm going to play the game as it is and have fun. You know, so it's, it's kind of a conscious decision if you can have fun or not. Um, you know, it's kind of up to you, you know, if you have fun. And so I endeavor to have fun at this. And so I'm going to kind of do the things necessary to have fun. And so I'm going to leave that loader there. I'm just going to go to the, um, just above it. And I'm going to go above the um, area. And I'm going to mine above it. As you can see how limited the grip is on that loader. I do not know why that is so terrible right now. I think I may not have x gripped the tires. And so I'll have to check that. Um, you know, again, I've, I've brought that, you know, I want to show you guys me bringing that up. Um, and so I don't want to, I don't want you guys to have to sit through me bringing everything up. So that's why I kind of brought that up. Um, you know, you missed me bring up the excavator. So, you know, I'm not going to show you me bringing everything up, but I kind of wanted you to see a little bit of transpo, um, and, and what that looks like and kind of the cool nature and benefits of that. So I turn on my drill. And I'm going to kind of manipulate the stick, bring the stick in. And I'm making chunks. And so what I'm going to do for right now is I'm going to grab the chunks. And so I'm going to grab my ore. I can grab a couple at a time. Theoretically, if I didn't have all this crap on me. There we go. And so I'm going to grab chunks. And this is, you know, this is what it is until I can come up with a better system. You know, um... Eventually, I will figure out a system, you know, maybe use a scraper as my miner. But, you know, I really enjoy what I built here, and so I'm kind of, I want to use it. And so a big part of this is not necessarily what is most efficient for me. It's what's most fun for me. And so for me, using the equipment that I build is where a lot of my entertainment um, from the gaming sessions comes in, is actually playing with my toys and so that's what I'm doing here. And so I kind of have to do a little bit of a workaround. But that doesn't bother me. Um, you know, I, this is fun to me to just kind of, you know, of course, would I rather just be able to scoop it up? Sure. But that's not the game we currently have. And so I'm kind of just working around what we have and making it work. And so I'm sure that if I put a bigger motor on this, it would go faster. I don't need this to go faster. You know, I kind of like these. Um, I've always loved these work games. Uh, I find them very relaxing. Is you know, it's one of the reasons why I really was wanted an industry um, update for this game. Is you know, to do these sorts of things. So it doesn't bother me. So I'm curious. Um, tool tips. I don't know what the ore uh, limitation is on this. So again, that's something we'll learn together here. And I'll grab that ore there. So it looks like I don't need to move it around as much as maybe I thought I would have to, which is kind of interesting. As you can see, as long as it's in the area, it's popping them out. I can get rid of that funnel, which is kind of cool. I don't like that funnel sitting there, so I want to kind of get rid of that. So we'll do a little testing here, and then we'll go do that mission, I think. And so I might at some point build that scraper. I want to kind of come up with a couple ideas of how to do this. And again, a huge part of the game for me is actually um, building. I love the engineering phase and building stuff. And so I should be able, ooh, that's a big one. So I'm curious if these, if the ore are sized based on anything or if it's just kind of random, but uh, interesting. So there we go. So I'm interested, if I get that bucket on the loader closer, will they fall in? And so let's do a test. Again, uh, this is the testing phase. I'm not out here to make money. I have a big chunk of money, if you can see. I have 800 and something thousand dollars. Um, I'm not all that interested. I don't find it necessary right now for me to make a bunch of money. The goal here is to learn how to do mining, to make some cool vehicles that will work with mining, that's that's my main goal. Um, you know, I don't need to make a ton of money all the time. Every mission doesn't need to be a huge money bonanza. Um, you know, every mission needs to be fun. That's that's kind of my litmus test. Is if if I'm having fun, 
it's not a wasted endeavor. And so, making a lot of ore now, that's good, so. Uh, I, just, I just fed my clothes in there, I think. So, this is not scooping it up. That's fine. Um, it's good to know. I was hoping this would scoop it up. I did some testing. I thought it would scoop, but uh, I guess not. So, you see how I'm close to there? Did that one go in? 36, 36. So, let's do some testing, see if these kick in. So, not kicking in. So, I was kind of seeing how far this can be away before it just doesn't grab. So, it's not grabbing, so that's fine. Yeah, you know, I definitely like to have a more realistic scenario than a man picking it up with his hands, but um you know. We'll get there eventually. You'll kind of get this figured out how I want to set this up. You know, a scraper would be cool. Um not thrilled with the way they did this. I think they could have done it more realistically. Um but instead of complaining about it, what I'll do is I will eventually it's when I finally kind of figure out um enough about the ore to make a feature quest, I will. You know, ideally what I would like is the ability to have a larger vacuum distance on these so that these could be say five blocks away and it would vacuum up the ore and then um you know, it'd easily suck those in if it was this close and then have a five minute timer on these so that it um you know, these chunks would stay in the world for five minutes or, you know, more likely have a slider so you could de determine how long you wanted them in there. Okay, we're going to do one more. Um, I'm going to go shut this off and stow it. And so that was a good test. Again, I want to kind of fill it with testing and with um, some other gameplay. Um, that'll kind of keep it fresh and interesting. So I'm just going to leave this on. Um... This will shut off as the electricity is goes up over 90. It'll automatically shut the generator off. So even leaving it on, that generator is barely going to use anything. So, like, see that? That didn't even get sucked up. I kicked that under. And so that's interesting to kind of learn um, how, these, how this bucket is realistically going to work. So I don't know if 50 is a lot or 50 is a little. Um, no idea. A scraper would be really cool because, so my, kind of my idea with a scraper is I showed a scraper last time, and so essentially you would be able to drive it over these, and it would drill it and fill it, and then you would dump it, dump the bucket. Um, but, you know, I built this stuff, so I kind of want to use this. So let's go ahead, let's grab the Mac Pinnacle, and let's go ahead and I'm going to save, let's go ahead and get a little pick here. Uh, try to get someplace cool like to have some pictures to document the play sessions. And we don't need to look through the world. Alright, that's cool. And, um, so I think what I want to do is we'll grab the Mac Pinnacle, and let's see what's that mission that we got here. Oh, wow, it's all the way up there. I don't want to go up that far. Where are we at here, time-wise? Yeah, I don't want to go up there. Where are we? Um, Coast Guard, Beginner Base. I haven't really looked at my seed yet either, so I'm kind of interested in what this, how the seed looks here. That's an interesting island. What is... I've never... That's interesting. $100,000 island. This is kind of interesting. All right, so let's do this. Let's grab the Mac Pinnacle. Let's go ahead down to the... Um, back down to the hangar. And I'm going to transpo up the new mining truck, and that will kind of, uh, we'll end the episode there. Then we have all these toys up here, and since the transpo is done, you know, well, I'm not, you know, I have, don't have that much construction experience, but, you know, often what you'll do is, you know, they'll transport the equipment up, you know, either the morning or the day before, or a couple days before, and they'll put everything on site, and then when the guys come in, they can operate the equipment. Um, and so... You know, this is kind of the setup phase and the logistics phase. And I'm, you know, I've pretty much always been in either in lo equipment operation and logistics my whole life, and so it's kind of um, I enjoy that part of it. Okay, I don't know why that didn't hook. Um, all right, let's go ahead and back up here. Up, up, up! Come on, come on, come on. 
All right, so we're going to hook this trailer up, and then um, we'll head down, and I will, you know, you can go ahead and use the bookmarks um, to, if you want to skip me going down, and just see me going up, and I'll load up the um, dump truck, and that will be up here, and then we'll have the three components that allow us to do most of the uh, work with the ore here. There we go. Okay, we're grabbed now. Let's go ahead and we will raise the goose, uh, lower the gooseneck, raise the trailer. All right, good. So I'm gonna I'm gonna raise it up again a little bit high. That's actually how they raise the height of the real ones. Uh, foot goes up. All right, and we're good to go here. So let's go ahead and grab it. Uh, it breaks off, and let's go ahead and we'll do a little jackknife turn out of here. Uh, oh, uh, his foot foot's up, right? Okay, so we're grabbing a little bit there, um, so that's fine. So I'm grabbing a little bit, and so what I need to do is I need to raise the gooseneck and change the geometry a little. It's hitting something, which it would in real life. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead. This trailer is unreasonably long. You wouldn't be going full speed with this trailer. I did shut damage off, and again, this is part of the testing and learning phase is, you know, kind of seeing what I need. And once I kind of figure out what I need, I can decide um, how to how to configure my vehicles a little bit, you know, better or different. So over there, I need to explore. I think that's where the iron's going. I am not sure. Let's check the map, see what it says. I think, I hope I'm still not, I am still moving with that. But um, that's the old mine. I'm um, not sure what that does. That might have the refining. I don't know. Um, I kind of want to discover a lot of this ore with you guys and figure it out. So... I-beam trailer, I'll probably make a shorter version for things like the front end load or all that does. I need to cut some of them out and shorten it up. Uh, that'll be better for transporting things that... Ooh, slow down here on the bumps. Yep. <laughs> okay. And um, that will... Uh, especially, I won't have to be doing this all the time. The reason I'm doing this all the time is the excessive length. And there's only really one vehicle that needs this much... Um, this long of a trailer, and that is the vehicle we're going to be bringing up. So I'm going to bring up my mining dump truck, and that will um, that will be what we're going to dump the front end loader into in order to transpo uh, the ore. That has a very large capacity. I could use something like the um, the Macar dump truck, or I could use uh, the Macar and the high tip. Um, you know, I have a couple options. So I'm going to start with that. You know, I built that purpose built for mining, so I'm going to kind of stick with that. Once we get, uh, yeah, so see, I have this nice and high now, so I should be able to go fast on these roads. And so we're probably up 60, 70 miles an hour here. So this doesn't look like we're going 70 because of the width of the road. But, you know, we're going 70 miles an hour, so this really shrinks your travel time down by going so fast. And so, yes, of course, I'm screeching the tires. I'm trying to go probably 50 around that corner. Got to be careful of this bump. Should be all right now with that trailer raised, as you can see. But the ability to go 70 miles an hour really uh, makes it so that, you know, we're doing about 74. That's me just not paying attention. It's not steering right. So uh, this really cuts these distances down and makes them really pretty reasonable to uh, traverse um, long distances. You know, and so... Again, a lot of people have already complained about how vast and far these distances, but I think that gives things value. Is you know, it, it makes you okay. You have to build a truck, or you have to download a truck from the workshop to transport your vehicles. You know, you might want to put them on a train and transport them. It gives you some value to doing your decisions, and so uh, when you have to travel a reasonable distance, you might want to get your builds right. You know, and so a lot of people have kind of talked about you know, oh, I don't like career. I don't like career because, you know, I transport my vehicles all the way out there and realize something's wrong with them. Well, that's part of the thing that I like is I like refining my vehicles and making them better every day. And so, you know, that's why it takes me so long to, to release things in the workshop. That's why I get a lot of entertainment from doing this is was it a pain to have to bring the front end loader back to the workbench and work on it? A little bit. But, you know, I enjoy driving it around in my truck. You know, I actually enjoy driving the truck. You know, and so, um, you know, even even though I do this for a living, I still enjoy driving my game truck around, you know. 
And even though I, you know, flew for a living, I still enjoy flying around um, in the game. And so I've always been an equipment operator, and I've always loved operating equipment. So if you don't like operating equipment, I certainly can understand that you don't like driving these things around all day long. I get it. But um, that's kind of what it is. And so, you know, you can kind of um, try to plan for some of these things by once you get your build up to a really high working state, you can... Um, you don't have to transfer them as much, and you can kind of leave them there. And so that's why, you know, I'm not transporting my stuff back to base every mission or every game session. I'm trying to, like, the excavator's been up there now for me for three sessions. You know, one of the videos got screwed up, so you guys didn't see me transport the excavator up there. But I transport the excavator up there. I've transported the front end loader twice. Um, I'm going to be transporting the mining truck up there once. And so I kind of enjoy this, you know, and it also tells me, hey, it, it takes me a little bit of time to to bring things up to the mountain. Let's get them right. And so, you know, again, that's that's getting just because I have the gooseneck up too much. And it's rubbing on the uh, fifth wheel or the uh, deck plate. And so, you know, again, a big part of this for me is once I get my vehicles kind of refined and up to, you know, say 99% complete, should be able to leave them up there and not have to keep transpoing them. And so we can get out of that transpo phase. All right, so let's actually just put this right here. Let's jump out. Uh, doors closed. Oh, come on, jump out. All right, let's go ahead and raise the gooseneck over the trailer. Put that on the ground. Let's lower the foot. So the more I practice with my stuff, too, the better I'm getting with um, actually... Um, you know, kind of coming up with some procedures that I need to do to um, operate these things. And so I'm starting to get much quicker myself, um, you know, reconnecting the trailer and doing all this stuff. So I'm going to do a couple finishing up things on the uh, mining dump truck and we'll load it up. And there it is. Okay, so a couple things I need to do here. So, symmetry on, symmetry on. So, I wanted to do that. All right, and then that is painted. This all in here needs to be painted, so I'm going to bucket that off. And yeah, we'll bucket over here. Where are you, walls? Um, okay, these, all of these are... That's what's yellow is. Are these um, actual... Hoppers, those should be black. All right, there we go. All right, so that looks good there. Hopefully this is all set. Again, you know, these are not done. And because these are not done, there's a high chance that something's not going to work. I'm going to have to fix it. So it um, doesn't really bother me. It's uh, part of the game. It's part of what I enjoy about it building, so I kind of live with it. So let's go ahead and load this up. So the door is not working. That's fine. I can go in and out of the window here. Zing. Uh, let's actually just do this. Don't need what's on my dash here. Uh, let's get rid of symmetry. I don't want to cut something I don't want to cut. Okay, that's good. Um, door, is door connected to anything? I'm not concerned about it right now. I think everything was working. Let me make sure this was full of coal. Let's get rid of that. I don't want to go up there with a full load of coal that I then have to pay for and then dump on the ground. Do not, do not. All right, so we'll transpose this up. And hopefully that'll be our last transpo for a little bit. Um, the rest of them I'll do them off screen. I just kind of want to show you me transposing these different things up, the different procedures, kind of the different um, stuff to do, my different types of trailers. Uh, let's actually, sorry, sorry, sorry. Let's save it. I keep forgetting to save, and that's just going to make more work for me later. And it ends up why I end up having to do a bunch of different stuff is... You know, I often uh, forget to save it, and then I'll get in game, and I have to um, go fix something twice. So, jump in the seat. Um, I don't think any of that works. So six one, yeah. So my uh, my dash doesn't work yet. 
So this has those same um, track segments on there. Okay. That's brake. Two is reverse. Okay, and three and four are gearbox. Not the way I like it. Um, that's still a work in progress. And so, again, things will get fixed, and I will, um, you know, from now on, I'll be moving things off screen. But just wanted to let you see it, um, at least the beginning. So the grip on this doesn't seem right either. I don't know why the grip is kind of iffy on these. Need to fix, need to fix. Alright, so this doesn't want to steer properly. I will work with it the way I have it at present and then, um, you know, fix and transpo on my own time. But I kind of want to just get a transpo up there. I want to test it, see how this works, see how this works up there. Um, you know, like I've been saying the whole episode, this is the testing phase, seeing what works, seeing what doesn't work, refining, refining. It's kind of the, the Stormworks way is, you know, work with something, try to get it to work. If it's not working, go back, refine your designs. Um, you know, that's the whole engineering part of the game that's fun to me is just keep working on it, keep refining it. All right. Hit the brakes on this, so that's one. Uh, six is engine off. All right, let's get out of there. All right, so that is on the I-beam trailer. And when I press the button, it should snap on. As you can see, it grabbed. And so the trailer's pretty light, so as you can see, it put those front wheels off. Back wheels also pushed, so that brought that up. Let's go ahead and grab this. And let's get up there, so... I drove away in 10th gear, that's why it went running so fast ahead. It wouldn't really do that IRL, it's, you know, you would stall out trying to start in 10th gear. I can start in maybe 4th gear and I have to feather it a lot to get it to actually want to go in 4th without stalling. Um, generally, if I have a heavy load, um, I'll start in 1st. If I have a lighter load um, or I'm empty, I'll start in 2nd. I don't start in 3rd. Um, you know, so it's pretty much first to second for starting for me. Um, and generally, I'll start in first. I, you know, I, first is good for all of five miles an hour, so I'm out of first pretty quick. Okay. So let's go ahead and click that. Let's go ahead and uh, foot's what we want. Okay, let's push this. That's locked now. That was easy. Raise the foot, and let's lower the gooseneck. Okay. It's foot all the way up, foot's all the way up. All right, so we're ready to go. Again, this was hitting, I think, here, or it's hitting right here, so that's something to refine. As you can see, there's a sharp edge there. I might XML edit something across there or something to figure that out, but good to go here. So let's grab a quick pick of the um, of the Pat I-Beam and the Mac Pinnacle. like to get my pictures in. That's... Um, you know, both to have them for thumbnails, but also I like to just document what I'm doing. So as you can see, um, this this now explains why this trailer is so long. This trailer was purpose built for this vehicle, and so you know that that mining truck is not not super slow for a mining vehicle. You know, move around the mine at a pretty reasonable clip. But as you can imagine, that would be pretty slow on the road. So, again, this makes you want to build some trucks. And so, you know, um, I'm, I'm driving like dope here. Um, you know, again, you wouldn't be traveling fast with something like this. This is a wide load, an oversized load. Um, you'd want to be going slow, but whoa, 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 don't do it, man. Don't do it. Ugh. Alrighty then. So I think we'll end there, and I will fix this, and I'll send it up. Um, you kind of saw the basics of it. And we have a little bit of an oopsie here, which I actually kind of like. It's always fun to have an oopsie. Um, something a little bit different, and, um, you know, a little bit comical. A little emergent gameplay. You know, if I felt like it, I would go get a crane and, and crane this over, but I'm not going to do that. So take a couple of screenshots of my wreck. That's why these vehicles tend to drive pretty slow is um, for this reason.
But, you know, you kind of see the fundamentals, see the new trailer, and then the next episode um, we'll have everything up there. Might start with that mission. Don't know. Kind of playing it by ear, seeing what seems like it's going to be fun at the time. So I will see you guys in the next one.